to find you for Rebecca. I am the curator for Atmonet Africa. I'm also an exhibitor. We have favorite, favorite. I just, I just love um, the pieces I do because um, I use my pieces to tell the African story. I'm a fan about Africans telling their story because another person cannot tell the story the way they are told. So I like the, I use um, materials that you call it. I use dry seeds, I use stones, I use cowries, I use shells, I use raffia. No, I use wood to make my my pieces. And this is all these are the things that we can, we can find in our corners in Africa. So I, I'm sharing the richness and the ingenuity of the African art and craft to the world. Um, I think uh, I have always been a very active person. I've always, I mean, I love nature. You know? Nature is my go-to anytime I need to. And it's with anytime I, I need to go heal from things. Nature is always my go-to and so I like what nature shows me. I love the trees, I love the, the birds, I love the water, I love the, so nature inspires me. And it came out to my interaction with people and also what I have gotten to learn um, in my growing up and I'm still learning as an African. Um, all of that comes from to inspire me to be very strong at the world. Telling the Africans by Africans. So, that, all of that, all of those just come up with inspiration to keep me to do what I have to do. So, this one is made from caravan. Like I said, when I'm not producing, I'm also designing things that I eat. Now, this is calabash. Calabash can be naturally found in, in, our, in Africa. So I'm just talking Africa. I'm not sure about that. Let me speak. Let me say that. I like to put things that are empty in the house. I just feel that when you have to move the things around, it just you know it reminds you of your roots, reminds you where you're coming from. It's like a it must like, like a plug for you to to to, to the earth, like a plug for you to to nature. Yeah? Seeing this and it's it's therapeutic for me. Artists therapeutic. So when you have this kind of African people around you. Always you know, speak peace into your mind. That's, that's the I, I do I do a lot of exhibitions. I'm a huge fan of course. Before I said doing my crafts, my African crafts. But you can see more on Afro Namens. That's my brand name. Afro Namens. That is A F R O R N E M E N T S. That's my name across social media. Shop your platforms as my name. You can see some of what I do on there. So, first of all, we'll start off with the fountain pad. Um, it's a really happy face, is it? <laughs> this is more like a uh, interesting thing. These people live in the same world. Some of them live 10 years, 20 years, and I hope you can see their lifestyle of fishing and everything. So it really goes to study how the life of people is in the life this is done by God. He is more talented. He does um, metal, he does painting, he does ballet man. He does ballet man. Another restless artist like myself. This is one of the people. So many are respected. This is the one that I understand. My name is Sylvester Aguda. I'm a mixed media and collage artist. 
and I've been doing this for over 30 years now. It's something I've been very passionate about. And what a lot of people or know or may not know about me is that I'm a self-taught artist, but I call myself a God-taught artist. Exhibitions are actually not uh, very easy to, to come up with. You know, a lot goes into the preparation, the planning, and most importantly, the kind of works and the pedigree of artists that you want to share their works with. So um, this particular exhibition was uh, as a result of our collection, um, our collective ideas to put together some a platform that can feature other artists who do not have the ability or the opportunity to showcase their works. So we call this Art Connect Africa. Art Connect Africa is a it's a move to empower artists. It's, to, it's a move to grow artists, African artists, Nigerian artists, most important because this is home. We want to try and see how we can bring them to speak, to bring them to the public, to showcase what they do. And most of the people exhibiting here are people that we found online who their works are very captivating. Oh, okay. We have some veterans here, and then we have some upcoming artists. And so it's a mixture of the two. Oh, okay, so everything we see here is not just made by you, so it's a different collection. Yes, oh, okay. so it's different artists and different works, different mediums, you know. I have one of my pieces right behind me, uh, which is made out of piece, bits and pieces of paper. Um, I call myself a collage artist because um, I use paper to do my works. I've graduated from paper to fabric, from fabric to metal strings, and I spray paint on canvas and wood for now. This piece was inspired by telling the African story. Um, I feel the mask, the mask is one African identity. You can talk about the festac, the bini head, we talk about most of the tribes in Nigeria and most of the tribes across Africa generally uh, have the mask. Some people see mask as very fearful, some see it as fetish, some see it as diabolic and all that. But I think it is part of us and it is the way we perceive it. So what I've done right behind me is a friendly mask. You can see the vibrant colors, you can see the richness. The very first one I made, I titled it Courage. What lies behind your behind the mask? The mask is something it's designed to scare you. But what you can do is to overcome fear. So my message to people when I make the mask is for them to overcome fear. You know, that thing that you think is terrorizing you, you can overcome it. And so you have to look at the positive side of things. And that's why you have very bright, vibrant colors in this piece. And you can see the identity to the African um, client. You can see our wildlife being represented there. You can see motifs showing symbols that were there right from our father's times, you know, in this piece. So it's a unique one. Um, I would say we should take pride. We always say this, we should, charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. Um, people should encourage the Nigerian artists. They should encourage the African artists. Right now, African art is highly sought after in, in the European countries and worldwide. So, we should take pride in our culture. We should promote the African artists. There are so many big galleries. There are so many big homes. There are so many people building beautiful offices and houses. Let them put our African art in their space so that there can be some means of identity. Most times you go to offices or beautiful spaces and you find works you know, that have been bought from other parts of the country, other parts of the world. But it's funny that you know people from other parts of the world give more value to our work than our own people. So we want to encourage our people to look inwards and look at all the details, the energy, the effort and the time that we put into telling our story. Because this is telling African story. And when somebody comes into your space, the person should be able to identify with you. Life is all about identity. Art is life. And this is part of our life. So please, let, I believe people who want to collect art can collect our works and pay 
a reasonable amount for them. You cannot buy art. Art is priceless. Mm. So whatever you are giving is a token of appreciation for what God has put into that person's creativity. So please support us, empower us, bless us with, you know, by patronizing us, the African artists. Yes, so um, right now I'm on social media, I'm on Instagram as Silver Screen Arts. That is S Y L B E R S C R E E N. Silver Screen Arts, one word A R T S. Silver Screen Arts. On Instagram, same applies for Facebook and Twitter. So right. if you go there, you'll see our collections. And then there is this, my personal page is Arts of Sylvester Gouda. Arts of Sylvester Gouda. So if you go on Instagram, you'll find me. My name is Adiola Obaru. I am the founder and the owner of Ablesworth Pottery. Ablesworth Pottery is all about bringing back the love and the joys of pottery. And it's something that we have been doing for a couple of years now, just in spreading the love and the joy of pottery. We've been introducing it as a lifestyle activity. So it's something that during weekends or even do sometimes during weekdays, people come here and they just make wonderful things. Like I can show you, this was made by a perfect beginner, someone who has never done pottery before. And they came up with this beautiful piece, which we taught them how to do, right? So what we do here is we, we run pottery classes. So we teach absolute beginners, people who have never done pottery before. We teach people how to do pottery, make their own pottery products. And apart from that, we also make um, crockery bowls and uh, dishes um, for a few restaurants. And we also make planters. So we make planters from from uh, pottery products and also from fiberglass. So we're all about just making things from the beautiful natural resources that we have in the country. And we're all about also encouraging the wide uses of clay as a material of choice. Um, so I'll say one or two things. Clay is not just used for making bowls and cups. Um, if we look at the construction brick over there, um, we would find that uh, clay can actually be used to clay bricks can actually be used to construct houses. You can construct houses very easily. You can construct houses very easily from from clay bricks. And from that, you would see that because clay has a cooling effect. It's much better to, create, to, to build a house with a clay construction brick as opposed to just a cement block. Right? So the cement block that absorbs it, but what you want to do is build with a clay brick that can have a cooling effect so that in the long run you have a cooler house. I saw that pottery was a, 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 an art form that was dying. Right. Um, for instance, I went to Yabatek, right, and I saw that in Yabatek, in, in the year where I went there, there was just one student that was set to be graduating from from um, ceramics course, and I just thought, ah, in the whole Yabatek, just one student, ah, there was something that should be done about that. So that was why I said, okay, maybe we should start teaching poetry in schools so that we can inspire the next crop of. Um, of artists, right? So we teach poetry now in schools. We're inspiring the young generation, children that are still in primary school, children in secondary school. We're inspiring them so that by the time they get to university, they will take poetry seriously because there's so much that can be done from poetry and from ceramics at large. So this is one of our very favorite art pieces. Right? Now, let me explain the foundation behind this. Right? This was built by hand. In pottery, you have two major techniques. You can either use your hand to build things, or you can build things on the pot as well. This pot uses three different techniques. Under the hand, you have the coil method. This is the coil here. 
So it's just done by rolling clay into foil. Yes. So this is the foil method here. And then this is the pinch method. So the pinch method is just made by taking a, a, a ball of clay and pinching into it so that you have a depression in your clay. Right? So this is the pinch method. And then you have the slab method, yes, which was used to make um, this part. Right? So you have the slab method for just taking the clay and flattening it and rolling it into the shape of your design. It's a very beautiful piece. Very nice. So right now, the drawback with ceramics, with pottery and ceramics at large, the drawback is that after you have made your pottery work, right, which as I said, you can do it by hand. After you have made your pottery work, you would have to take that pottery work to a kiln. A kiln is an oven where it gets fired, and it gets fired at almost a thousand degrees sometimes. It is very power and energy intensive getting up to that temperature. So I would say the drawback right now is the power constraints. The power constraints is a limitation which the government can get involved by setting up a ceramic village. Other countries have ceramic hubs where there's this particular place that the government has said, okay, we know you need power, so we'll give you dedicated power here so you can continue doing your work. So what we just want to encourage is that we need the government to please step up and dedicate a place that we have running power so that we can make these things. Because I can tell you, Every time you go to a party in Lagos, you get a gift. And that gift is usually what? A mug. Now, those mugs, you can make them in less than five minutes down here. But all those mugs, I guarantee you they're all from China. A lot of times, when people go to China, they go and look for things that are very cheap. And they bring it here and they say, oh yes, you know, we brought you a mug, you wanted a mug. But a lot of times, you don't know what kind of glaze they use. You don't know if the glaze that they use is a food safe glaze. There are glazes for decorative items like this. I'm, you know, I'm going to use this as a badge. I'm not going to drink from this. But the glaze that I will have used for something like this should be it should be food safe. So it should not have any lead in particular. But sometimes you just never know. If you go to China, the cheaper ones are, you know, they have lead in them. But you don't know what people are bringing in. So sometimes it's just good to make your own. And sometimes the way to identify a, a mug that has lead in it, uh, lead in the glaze, is that if you pour hot water in, into it, if it changes color, then you would know that something is wrong. So please and please and please, let us be making our own ourselves. Let us be making these things in the country. And But the thing is just we need the government to step in and help us to solve the, the, the power drawback so that we can encourage more and more ceramists and potters to, to make their own things and to sell in the country. You can find them at Abel's West Pottery Club. So we are based in Koyi, and as I said, we have trained so many people all around Lagos. So we are here for you. You see the man and the wife, who is the mother, um, the father, probably going out and coming to the with the umbrella.